Good morning, everybody. This is Howard of AB Transfers UK. Uh, busy with transfers. And whenever I'm busy with transfers, you'll see probably less output from me because <laughs> they take up a lot of time. But whenever I can, I will try and uh, squeeze in a bit of video. So today, it's a continuation of a very big job we've had for reel to reel tapes. And I'm busy running. Not running. Yeah, I suppose running is the right word. Reel to reel tapes. And the problem with reel to reel tapes, other than them being very long at times and quite yucky in terms of the amount of oxide they shed off and a lot of cleaning that has to be done with them in, in, in most places, is there was no standard, unless you get a, a bunch of tapes from a studio, even then. But, but you know, if you get like a domestic collection of reels, there's no standardization. Other than the tape fitting on the machine, that's where the standardization ends. You can look at things like recording speed, anything from 30 inches per second down to one and, what's it, one and three quarter inches per second. It can be stereo. It can be four channel, two channel, um, full track, half track. It really is so much. So often what ends up happening is, you know, not only does it take time to transfer the tape, but then you've got to go on after it and you've got to edit it and split it and duplicate channels and things so that it's a contiguous file of, of logical material. Um, and it's just very time consuming. So that's really where the cost comes in. Um, you know, if it was a case of just play and record and it's done, that's great. But because you never know what's going to come on these tapes, you know, you can have 20 minutes of silence and then suddenly a recording. You kind of have to run the whole thing through regardless. Okay, that's fine. You know, that's par for the course. So this is a bunch of choral music, um, organs and whatnot, and that's fine. But there's a lot of tapes, so... I think I've got about six or seven reel-to-reel -reel machines. Some are 30 inches, some are seven and a half inches per second, some are quarter track, half track, um, half inch, quarter inch, and so on. But at the moment, these are all um, quarter inch tapes. So on that side of the office, I've got uh, a nice old Revox, which I dug out, and that's busy capturing into computer as, as a high quality WAV. And that's, I'll have to edit out afterwards. But I just kind of like the look of that. I mean, that is just funky chicken, isn't it? I mean, I bought that reel-to-reel -reel 10, 12 years ago as, as a restored unit, thankfully. And um, it's got a bit of headwear, but for most recordings, it's fine. And then over here, again, another one is running down here. And this one is an Akai. At the moment, these machines are all doing seven and... Uh, seven inches seven and a half inches seven inches per, oh, seven inches per second yeah and um now you see that's gone blank now so whatever's on there is blank and that's kind of cool let's just check yeah just good old hiss there at the moment and that one this is my favorite setup because this one's going into um a very nice mixer so i can monitor it i've got a lot of sources obviously and then it's going straight into this behringer ultra match pro which is a really nice um it's a sample rate converter so say you've got a a dat tape recorded at 48 kilohertz and it's very hard in software to convert that without having issues but in hardware this will do it for you so you can output up to 98 kilohertz a digital signal from any of the these sort of formats which is really interesting um you can change your emphasis number of bits and so on so this does a really good conversion from from this output into a digital signal and this goes digitally to the computer up there which is obviously recording the file and i've got a good old nad amp doing the monitoring right and then on this side <coughs> oh i've got a very nice pioneer i love these pioneers the rt707 um really nice deck really quite sleek and very modern for for reel to reel and um this one came to me in pretty good shape i added a, like a rubber surround to this which is otherwise just a hard spindle it just gives the tape a bit of extra grip 
and this is nice because it's being auto, it's an auto reverse machine although i find auto reverse can sometimes cause problems because the spindle um sometimes guy kind of goes off axis and then the tape just goes running across <laughs> i try not to use the auto reverse too much it probably just needs an alignment but you know other nice things about this one it's got a pitch control and uh it's got some nice options here setting your bias and whatnot uh, and this one's just going into a Tascam recorder. Um, there's no computer on this side. Actually, there's a computer on this side. I just haven't hooked it up. Oh, yes, this computer's hooked up for multi-channel recording. It's hooked up to a different capture box. Nevertheless, um, yeah, so that's that. And that's been done. And this just records onto a, a little memory stick goodie. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing today. So... <laughs> A little bit more sort of mainstream conversions today. I'm not doing um, anything too esoteric, I guess is the word. Is that the word? But you know, sometimes meat and potatoes is fine. And this is kind of meat and potatoes. There are a lot of people offering these kind of transfers. And I get that. There, there, there's so many of these tapes. There's, I think there's enough to go around for everybody to digitize. But... Um, I just kind of like the look of that. I just feel like I'm in the Space Command, like in a Jerry Anderson movie or something. You know, like Thunderbirds are go. You know. Anyway, that's me for today. Saturday morning, just saying hi. And from avtransfers.co.uk, where uh, anything goes, bye for now.